All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Blair Hutchinson, and you are tuning in to using Tableau to analyze your data lake. I'm a product manager at Tableau Software and have been with the company almost five years now. I work specifically on our technology partners team and work with our strategic partners like Databricks to create solutions for our mutual customers to find success with both platforms. So I'm really excited to talk to you about that today. I'm also joined, joined by John from Databricks. John, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hey everyone, uh, this is John Nefeolo. Uh, I'm in product management uh, at Databricks, uh, looking at our efforts around uh, enabling BI access and Active SQL access uh, over the data lake and making that a delightful experience for our users. Great. So let's jump into it and let's start with the agenda for today. First, we're going to talk about the Tableau platform. Then I'm going to pass it over to John, who's going to give an overview of, of Databricks SQL Analytics. Then I'm going to walk through a quick demo of what it looks like to connect to your Delta tables in Databricks. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some customer stories to really kind of pull this all together and really excited about that section to share what success has been for some of our, our joint customers. Before I jump into starting with the Tableau platform, I just want to share a statistic, which is that 98.6% of executives indicate that their firm aspires to be a data-driven culture, while only 32.4% report success. So that means that nearly it's nearly unanimous support for the idea that creating a data-driven culture is important. But many companies are struggling to realize that vision. Well, here at Tableau, our mission is simple. We help people see and understand data. And those seven words have guided us since our inception about 17 years ago and have really led us through what was really disrupting the entire BI and analytics industry uh, when I joined the company just a few, uh, few years ago now. And the people part of the mission has always been central to what's important to us, making sure that analysts have what they need to explore all of their data without limits. So let's talk a little bit about the Tableau platform on this next slide. This really encompasses everything that we deliver. And we may have started out as a desktop analytical tool back when I started the company in 2016 but we've grown so much more than that. When you bring together Tableau Server, Tableau Online, our web authoring experience in the browser, Tableau Prep, Builder, Conductor, our embedded SKU, uh, Tableau Mobile, and the rest of the great stuff that we're delivering and continuing to work on, we really deliver a breadth and depth of capabilities that our customers need for the end-to-end -end analytics experience. And we understand that Tableau or excuse me, the data is really a mission critical asset for your organizations, which is why we built the platform that we built to ensure that you have everything that you need to empower everyone with data without putting your data at risk at all. So you can see, I call this kind of the, the cake of, of the Tableau platform. Um, collaboration over data can happen anywhere. And um, that kind of starts with really quality analytics. With great power comes great responsibility, and it's pretty incredible what the Tableau community is able to do with, with, with our products. We've introduced incredibly powerful content discovery tools just in the last, in the last year. Um, governance continues to get better, data preparation tools, and last on this list is data access, which I want to return back to. Um, and obviously the flexibility to store your data wherever it lives and to host Tableau server in whichever environment best suits your needs, whether that's on premise where your data is in the cloud, or we also have a SaaS offering Tableau online. But going back to that data access piece, that's really where the magic happens. You can't see and understand your data unless you're able to connect to it. And Databricks has been an incredible partner in this space. And in the last year, really, really excited to announce our Databricks connector. So 
the Databricks connector, first and foremost, it's performant. That's really what Databricks is, is founded on, is being able to access that data faster than, than ever before. So if we look at what the experience was before connecting, before we had the Databricks connector, we, we were now able to realize a 12x in, uh, an improved initial connection speed. Our, our SQL generation is increased 30%. We have a, a simplified connection interface as well, so that it makes it really easy to connect directly to the clusters that are running your, uh, that, that are stood up for your analytical needs. And then it's also available in all of our products. So whether that's connecting in the web, directly in the web, or in our desktop products, or if you're looking to do um, data preparation as well. The Databricks connector can suit your needs, whatever it ends up being in Tableau. And I'm also really excited that we're continuing to work with the Databricks team to continue to, to refine and make this connector even better um, to suit more use cases uh, and to just continue to broaden adoption. So at this point, I'm going to pass it over to John, who's going to talk a little bit about the Databricks environment, and then I'll switch over to a demo. But John, I'll pass it over to you first. Hey, thanks, Blair. So let me give you guys a quick overview of SQL Analytics and kind of a few of the things you're thinking around the vision, as well as you know the different kind of features kind of supporting that vision to get there. So before we even get started about individual features, one thing I kind of want to clarify at a high level is what is a lake house that you've been kind of hearing throughout the summit? And a lake house is basically a data platform to enable a variety of use cases, not just a few of them, but kind of including like data science, machine learning, uh, ETL as well as BI directly on top of the data lake. So you kind of end up with less silos of different systems that you're kind of going back and forth and to kind of enable utmost productivity from that model of working in a seamless, coherent environment. And today, the piece we're going to actually focus on is on top of the Databricks platform, right? Things we're doing to kind of enable the lake house paradigm from a SQL perspective. So things around, you know, BI dashboarding, reporting, SQL access in general. And we're kind of calling this initiative at a high level SQL analytics. Our vision basically is threefold here, right? So the first thing is, right, we want to open up the data lake to companies so that they can effectively leverage it, the data within it, to a variety of users, not just uh, engineering folks. So if you're basically working in partners like Tableau, as well as kind of doing things in our own backend to kind of make this a seamless experience overall. At the same time, right, we're actually building a new experience as part of our UI so that just like, you know, our data scientists, data engineers, and, you know, other more technical folks have our workspace, you know, which is where you do your notebook-based analysis, which is where you can create Spark jobs. We basically want to enable our SQL users to have uh, something that they can feel at home to with. And these kind of things are including like in a SQL workbench type experience, kind of capabilities around add or querying, saving queries, and also like dashboarding and things like that. And finally, right, you want to make all of these experiences easy to use with minimal setup so that you can basically come in and enable your folks on top of the data lakes fairly easily and all of this be basically with the price performance that you would expect from a data lake. So let's now talk about the different pieces that we're working on to kind of get to this kind of vision, right? We kind of look at the world in three different lenses, in a sense, right? We have the SQL user experience. We have things that we're helping to do to make the life of admins a bit easier. And we're also doing you know, a lot of work to make performance seamless and easy out of the box. So the first topic that I want to cover is you know, what we're doing with SQL user experience. And to be honest, the, you know, the first and foremost part is kind of making sure that we work with you know, partners like Tableau and enable Tableau on Databricks and such use cases that I create. The second thing that we're actually looking there is actually around enabling uh, you know, a native first class experience right within our UI for SQL users so that just like data scientists have or data engineers have the workspace, you know, a person who wants to kind of do like ad hoc SQL, kind of save their SQL queries, kind of do some light uh, dashboard and visualization, also have those capabilities built right within our own interface. And we kind of look at it as different product lenses. So basically, this is, again, building on, this, on top of the same Delta Lake, so the same data sets, standardized governance layer, but kind of just offering different lenses depending on the application you want to do so that you still get the benefit of a unified platform, but 
have the simplicity and context of working on a, you know, on a specific use case or uh, something that would require a certain skill without having to you know, go to different tools on top of the same platform. And SQL Analytics basically provides just that for the SQL users, right? You basically have an integrated SQL editing and query catalog where I can browse my metadata on top of the data lake all in a secure fashion. I can you know, run and version my you know, SQL queries. And I can also get quick insights by doing light, some light dashboarding as well as time learning all through this integrated SQL editing experience. So that, again, without kind of having to move too far away from your data, like you can create insights. And this is an also great experience for folks who want to kind of create, you know, things that can be consumed from the BI tool directly. So imagine a, a user kind of consuming some, you know, some of the metadata assets here, building other assets for consumption from another BI report in a fashion that makes it end -end. Another thing, by the way, I didn't cover is this is all kind of tightly integrated with the security side as well. So whatever data security mechanism that you have for your existing tables, right, this will apply here too. And this will also apply all the way into the BI tools as well. So you basically have a model where you can kind of set the security on the data lake and that be available across the board, whether you're using from the integrated SQL Analytics UI or uh, any of the clients that the SQL Analytics experience supports uh, right away. Kind of switching gears a bit, uh, around SQL admin experience, we're basically looking to make sure that, you know, getting from zero to 10 and enabling a team of users or your whole organization on top of a data lake is as simple as possible. So we're basically introducing a new compute option called SQL endpoints to get us closer to this, right? And SQL endpoints basically provide scalable SQL optimized compute that doesn't require to, you know, input any Spark configuration, you don't have to pick instance types. You don't have to do a bunch of configuration. And Databricks basically will ensure that per t-shirt size you pick, the underlying you know, instance and Spark configurations reflect the highest price performance point available. And this is something that we can guarantee for t-shirt size and make it available without you having to experiment or keep having to switch. Another thing that's actually built into SQL endpoints is what we're calling concurrency scaling. Right? And this is actually achieved by our multi-cluster load balancing technology. Right, so as opposed to, you know, just kind of adding more worker capacity, we can now actually also scale things linearly. So as you have, you know, if, as you go from 10, 20 users to 100, 200 users, and even more, right, the system can also scale to that without you having to worry about it. So the system will recognize basically loaded queries, and a SQL endpoint will basically automatically manage as many clusters behind itself as needed to give you that, you know, target load that you need without you having to worry about it. You're still interacting with a single endpoint, right? You're sending all your Tableau queries, your SQL queries from other from our UI directly into this interface. And it basically kind of handles that behind the scenes uh, and makes sure that you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. Beyond that, right, everything that you're running through these SQL endpoints, right? Let's say you're running a Tableau report and you've run some, you know, SQL queries within the integrated SQL uh, client. And as you run these things, we actually log all of them centrally and make that available to administrators and auditors in an easy to use UI uh, where all of this is filterable and, and searchable. So you could basically come in, understand the usage across different you know, SQL endpoints as well as different users really easily. And also, let's say you're having a problem with an individual report that want to understand what's going on with a query. You can actually click into any of these queries and we'll actually provide a high level overview of what went on where the client was coming from, what's the source of this query, and all of these high-level details, as well as a breakdown of different execution details so that you can pinpoint something very quickly without necessarily having to go through mountains of information. We also give you more detail one more layer, but the goal is to give you and get to the insights as quick as possible. And the last topic I wanted to cover around SQL analytics is things we're doing around performance. And SQL Analytics actually incorporates many of the technologies and the different pieces that you probably heard being announced earlier in the sessions. But I'll give you a quick overview of how we think about performance and what are the different pieces that we're actively working on right now. So when we look at this, we kind of look at it from the standpoint of life of that query, right? The query starts basically from all the way from the left-hand side here. And then as basically, you know, it hits different pieces, right? There are different things and, you know, areas that we're optimizing before it kind of hits the delta lake. And it starts with the BI SQL client connector layer. Then you'll have the ODBC, JDBC layer, which we call the network pool layer. And after that, you're actually in our control plane, right? This is where the SQL endpoints come in and give you a scalable routing service so that you never have to kind of worry about the concurrency or scale bit as much. 
And then finally, you're kind of in uh, Spark and Photo land, and you're kind of planning your queries, executing your queries before finally kind of hitting the data lake and then returning the insights or the results to the end user. And the things we're kind of looking across the stack around it is, of course, one of them is usability, right? And this is actually more important on the client connectivity side than anywhere in the platform, right? Beyond usability, price performance, so that regardless of what type of workload you're running, you have the confidence of, hey, I'm actually getting you know, market-leading price performance. And third, making sure that you're getting low latencies regardless of the concurrency level you're targeting. And you'll see us basically with different features and different kind of capabilities target these diff different areas and make sure that we you know, make progress across all of them. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, Blair, it's all yours again. John, thank you so much. That was, gr that was a great overview. And now before I jump into the demo, let's talk a little bit about the movement of data from source to Databricks into then Tableau. And the, the example that we're going to use today is using data to predict fraud. So our goal is to be able to provide a data set for people to explore fraud that's happened and kind of explore the why, but then also be able to predict which customers are potentially susceptible to fraud. So now on, on the far left-hand side, we've got payment networks. That's going to be card transaction data. That's going to be, you can think of that as streaming data that'd be entering the Databricks environment. Then we've got our databases and CRM information. So that's all going to land in a, a Delta table in, in Delta Lake. Then we can apply ML flow to that in order to predict uh, which people, which customers are, are uh, susceptible to fraud. Once we've then created those, those tables and done that cleaning, then we'll use SQL analytics to then connect to Tableau. And that's when we'll start to um, do some visual analysis with the goal really to make something that's visual, interactable, and actionable for someone that's working as a call, call center analyst or something like that would, that would be trying to detect this. So with that, now let's jump into, into Tableau for a quick demo. So we're going to start out in Tableau Desktop. This is our primary authoring tool. And I've opened up our, our Databricks connection dialog here. So all of this information can be sourced from the, top, from the Databricks platform. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using the SQL endpoint made, av made available by the SQL analytics to connect to my Delta tables in, in uh, Databricks. So I'm going to I'd paste my access token here. And I've actually already gone and done this. Before I jump into the analysis that I've already started, I want to highlight the difference between live and extract. Our customers, I'll go over, we'll actually cover a few that use this uh, in customer case studies we'll go through in a second. They use a hybrid uh, approach of using live versus extract. So live, as you would expect, sends queries directly to the Delta tables. Extract is actually going to send one large query, pull that whole table into memory, you know, what's called a dot hyperfile, and use the Tableau data engine to query that information. You can then schedule those, refresh, those extracts to refresh with Tableau server. So we've made our connection, and I've actually taken the liberty to actually start us all along our journey for analyzing this data. I've created a dashboard that kind of gives us a 360 view of um, some fraud patterns that might be happening. So we've got our list of customers. We've also got some, some of our states that are seeing the highest amount of fraud. So to me, this looks like Texas and California and some of the states on the East Coast seem to be the most problematic. And I want to see if that's a localized geographical issue or if it's simply widespread throughout the state. And I can take action on that directly in Tableau by exploring this kind of an ad hoc fashion. So I'm going to bring out a mount, throw that onto size. And for this, I'm just going to focus in on Texas. Now I can drill down into the different layers of my location data, and I can see, you know, this actually looks pretty widespread. Definitely some, some hotspots in kind of the Houston, and maybe the Dallas area. 
as you can see, just answering these questions kind of at the speed of thought by just dragging and dropping and drilling into this information. So my next step here would be to publish this dashboard, make it more widely available for uh, our car call center folks that want to be um, are on kind of the front lines to see if folks are, are more susceptible to fraud or not. Um, and to do that, I'd be jumping over into Tableau server. And here I can set subscriptions. I can actually set alerts. Maybe if certain individuals cross a, a threshold, then I, I want to be immediately alerted. Uh, I can also have a conversation around the data. So I can add comments um, to things that I'm seeing, call out particular people to, to, to kind of have a discussion around it. I could also go through and edit this directly in the web, as I mentioned, and uh, in that that way, then I can actually potentially even connect to more more data, more more DataBricks tables potentially to bring in to add to this analysis that I'm doing. So, quick demo. I just wanted to show you what that connection experience could look like, and then how you take that into exploratory analysis in Tableau. Okay, so now let's switch over and talk about some customer case studies. And first, let's stop, start talking about Flip. Now, Flip is a retail tech company that helps shoppers provide for their families by making life more affordable by reinventing the way that people shop. To do this, they work with large retail retailers and manufacturers to connect them to tens of millions of shoppers through their digital shopping marketplace. And when we talked to Flip, we heard from them that their previous architecture was just not up to the standards of the business. And they were unfortunately seeing little engagement with the data. Data flows were coming from two different places. They had content data that was coming from their retailers, um, and they also were gathering event data directly from their applications. That event data was all unstructured and required quite a lot of cleaning and normalization, which really meant that analysts were reliant on the data engineers to just ask some basic questions. They also ran into some scalability issues because of the storage and compute for their relational database was shared. And this ultimately all led to poor performance in, like I said, little engagement. So their new strategy meets those requirements of the business though, and ultimately ended up simplifying the process. And that process you can see just in the bottom of the screen here. Their goal was to create a culture of self-service analytics, and they identified five key metrics to track to make sure that they, they had accomplished their goal. And those were schema governance for event data, decoupling storage and compute, overall better performance, data discovery, and then also paying per use. And they were able to accomplish that with a combination of Tableau and Databricks. One thing that I'll also highlight is they enable both live and extracts in their environment in Tableau. So that's part of their strategy. So for their high level use case dashboards, the ones that are really high touch and um, are, are more kind of reporting fashion, those use extracts. Whereas some of the more granular level exploration that they enable um, the business to do, those are live because those are going to be touching some of the lower level data that um, might be coming in more immediately that they need to have access to. So really great use case, really awesome to see the success that Flip has had. Our next one is Wakecamp. And similar to Flip, they've really empowered everyone within their company to use data. Now, Wakecamp is an online retailer based out of the Netherlands, just to give you a sense of scale. They have about 400,000 products. They have 5,000 daily visitors to their site. They have do 650 euros in sales, and they ship about 11 million packages every year. So Databricks and Tableau are embedded in every department that they have. And now they have instilled this culture of data literacy that goes all the way from the C-suite down to the folks that are working in the warehouse. It's pretty, pretty incredible. And the way that they've done this is they have a motto of sharing is caring. I love this. What they've done is they've created user groups to explore how dashboards are created, um, they create case studies within the business to show how work has been completed using Databricks in Tableau. And they even host these fun hackathons where 
you have about two hours to complete a dashboard with a given data set and whoever creates the most compelling user, the compelling story with the data uh, wins a prize. So I love that story. They have this motto also that um, there is end-to-end -end responsibility for folks that are working in both products. So you have folks that are curating data sets in Databricks, and then those results manifest themselves into tables that are usually analyzed in Tableau. And about 65% of dashboards in their Tableau environment are connected to Databricks. And while that may seem low to some people, Having worked in sales engineering at Tableau two years prior to becoming a product manager, this is pretty incredible. That's, that's, that's one of the higher percentages for a single data source that's not a flat file that I've, that I've heard of. So that's incredible adoption. And, and they also are, are looking at billions of rows in some of these dashboards. When they demoed this to us, they they shared an example where they were clicking through from high level metrics, um, looking at some of their top level categories, which include about seven. You can think of uh, women's fashion, men's fashion, um, furniture, etc. Drilling all the way down to the four hundred excuse yeah four hundred thousand different articles within those top level categories so they do this not only not just because they can they do it because they want to be able to answer those questions directly as they come up in their meetings so they have these dashboards where they start at high level ask some questions about um, anomalies that they're seeing and then they're able to to figure out kind of the root cause of what might be going on by drilling down really just in, in real time with great performance um, in these dashboards in the meeting so that they, they don't need to schedule another follow-up or go collect more data to answer that question. So really, really great story with Wakecamp. The final one that I wanted to share today was from the U.S. Air Force and reporting. And so the, the problem that they originally ran into was that there were so many different types of technology. They had a multitude of hosting environments, different rules for access, different levels of maturity uh, throughout the business, and data kept multiplying faster and faster, and they really couldn't keep up with it. So they needed a combination of technology that would help shine a light into corners of their organization um, that they had never explored before and and again um, democratize that data so that more people could be empowered to ans ask and answer their own questions and so my first bullet here is mission vault and so the the mission came from the chief data officer who wanted to empower the department of uh, the Air Force to harness the data for competitive military advantage. So you can imagine this is a pretty mission critical um, undertaking that they had. And VAULT actually is an acronym and it stands for Visible, Accessible, Understandable, Linked, and Trusted. And what that all boils down to is they wanted to create a data culture by increasing data use and literate and literacy in order to make efficient and effective decisions. And they needed to have a data architecture to support that. So the end result was that they were able to enable 40 different organizations within the Air Force and Space Force to do their data analytic. And they ingest 65 million records per quarter for different sources processed in Databricks and visualize them in Tableau to inform leadership on a daily basis. So like I said, this has now become, this now is a mission critical part of of the Air Force um, to see and understand their data the way that they are using Tableau and Databricks. I love sharing these customer stories and I wanna actually revisit the statistic that I started out with, which was again, just so 98.6% of executives indicate that their firms aspire to a data-driven culture while only 32.4% report success. And I hope that through sharing how Databricks and Tableau can work together and sharing some customer success stories that you now feel like you 
start to see the end of the tunnel for how to actually make that a reality for your own organization. So Tableau and Databricks, great solution together. We're continuing to work hard to bring solutions, good solutions to our customers. And thank you so much for having me and have a great rest of your day.